things are resupply missions. Okay. Oh, we're getting ready to hear from get, Capcom. Get, get Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? STEM in 30, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is STEM in 30 and future engineers at this the National Air and Space Museum. How do you hear me? And I have you loud and clear at the Air and Space Museum. Hello, future engineers. Very good to be with you today. Hi, Serena. This is Beth Wilson and Marty Kelsey, and we are really excited to be talking to you right now. We have the 3D printing winners here and a bunch of kids with uh, a lot of questions. And to begin, Marty's got a question. Serena, how has your first trip into space been so far? You know, it has been outstanding. The rocket ride up here was absolutely amazing. And it's, it's really fascinating to see how quickly your body gets used to moving in space and realizing you have so much more space to, to float in and fly in here than you do just by walking on the ground. Serena, we have Jason here. He is one of our challenge winners and he has a question. So uh, what are some of the possible uses of in-space manufacturing in the near future? Jason, that's a great question, and you know, after being up here for almost a month now, I realize how quickly that that's a very critical need. And the reason is, is you know, we're always doing maintenance on board the space station, making sure when things break, we're able to fix them. But every time we need parts or tools or anything that you know that we may need to help fix the station, we have to launch it from the ground. And so that's a lot of up mass, and that means we need rockets to do it. And so we're able to create some of those parts, whether it's a drill bit or anything like that. If we could make that up here in space, you know, by utilizing something like 3D printing, that would be so much better and easier for us. We've got Ansel, one of our two for the crew challenge winners. Ansel, what's your question? If you could have anything you wanted 3D printed on the ISS, what would it be? Hi, Ansel. I love this question because the first thing that came to mind was ice cream. I really miss ice cream up here. But if I had to pick something else, and I know we've been talking about parts maybe to help repair the space station, tools, things like that. One thing I thought about was what is something that all astronauts and people need if they're on a long duration space mission or let's say living on the moon? Medicines. Is there some way we could 3D print medicines on board the space station. Sure, it's not using plastic like what you're used to seeing with 3D printing, but could we use some of that other biological material and create medications for people to use? So that's the one thing that came straight to mind. And we have Austin, who is another uh, Two for the Crew Challenge winner. Austin, what's your question? Do the material properties of 3D printing material change when printed in zero gravity? So Austin, that's another terrific question. And actually, the, the, the materials themselves, the properties don't change. But the way they extrude from the machine, we think may change a little bit. So far on the space station, we've done more of a technology demonstration to say, does 3D printing even work up here? Are we getting what we expected? And the answer is yes. So when it comes out of the machine, like that, we are still getting the objects that we expected. But I think in the future, they're going to have to look at, hey, it may look the same as it does on Earth when we use a 3D printer, but is the internal structure of the object the same, or does microgravity affect that? Because we see so many bubbles and everything. Great question. If there is no up, down, left, or right, how do you know what direction you are going in? You know, there are many days that I start going into a module and I'm not sure where I'm going. And then I come out to eat breakfast. And there are people eating breakfast on the side or even upside down. And so I see all my crewmates and I think, where am I? And what direction is everything pointing? And the great thing is, you can point in any direction. There is no up, there is no down. It's really neat because if there's a bunch of us in one module, we can all usually wiggle and fit and fly around each other and do what we need to do. 
Serena, our next question might be from a voice that you recognize. Hi, Serena. This is your niece, Anna Sophia, and I have a question for you. What kind of personal belongings did you bring into space, and how did you decide what to bring? Hi, Anna Sophia. So good to see you. And I know a bunch of my family is there in DC. And I'm so glad you're able to come, as well as those listening from Houston and everywhere else. I love all of you guys. So, Anna Sophia, I definitely brought a lot of pictures of my family. That's very important to me. And they're in my crew quarters. And our crew quarters is like our little bedroom here on the space station. It's about the size of a telephone booth. And you think, well, that's not very big, but it's big enough when you can use all the area. But the other thing I brought, which is really cool and comes in handy, is my personal back scratcher. And this is great because you never know when you might need it. And it's great to be able to scratch your back when you need to. Hi, my name is Katie, and what is your daily routine? So Katie, our daily routine, usually we are up by about 6 a.m., 6.30. Uh, we all gather together and eat breakfast together. And today for breakfast, I had cereal and eggs. And food is another very interesting topic up here. It's something that we have to prepare and we usually have to add water to so that we can eat it. And then starting at about 7.30, we, have, we call Mission Control in Houston and Huntsville and Moscow and all the mission controls around the world and talk about the plan for the day. But if you look at what we're doing during the day, it's all different. So for example, today, uh, we've got a SpaceX vehicle that is coming up here to station very shortly. So I was preparing cargo for that. And after I finish talking with you guys at the Smithsonian, I'm actually going to be setting up an experiment in the United States lab that's going to look at different cancer therapies. So I'm really excited about this because, unfortunately, cancer is something that almost all of us there, and I'm sure you guys there at the Smithsonian, you either a family member or a friend, um, and it's neat that we're able to do those sorts of experiments on board the ISS. I also exercise for two hours a day every day uh, to keep our bones and muscles strong and healthy. And then finally, by about 7.30 at night, we're all eating dinner together. Hi, my name is Sarah. And do you study things in space, or do scientists on Earth study you in space? That's another great question, and uh, it's definitely a little bit of both. Um, certainly like the cancer therapy that I talked about, that's one thing I'm going to be studying up here. But scientists and engineers and everybody in the ground are constantly monitoring myself and the rest of my crew. Uh, they're looking at the different changes that happen in our bodies, with our muscles, with our heart, and with our eyes. They've even seen some changes in the eyeballs. And part of the reason they're doing this is because they think that some of the things they discover with us could help people on Earth. And the other goal that they're looking at is when we go to a place like Mars or, you know, another, maybe even the moon, where we go back to live for a long period of time, we want to know what's going to happen to the human body over that period of time. And so they're constantly studying us, and we're even drawing blood on ourselves up here, just like you do in the doctor's office, and we're sending those results down to the ground. Hi, my name is Ramsey, and my question is, have you ever had the idea to get a lot of water, pour it out, and see what happens. Uh, are you asking about water? Does water pour up here in space? Yes. Let me show you what happens with water. Hold on one second. So this is really neat. I had to learn how to eat up here when I first got up here. But you got to look at what happens to fluids. Nothing really pours up here. So I can open a special packet of soup. And that soup isn't going anywhere. It doesn't spill out. It sticks to the surface, and it sticks to each other. And that's because of something called surface tension. This is a drink bag, and it's filled with raspberry lemonade. And I'm going to show you what happens when I open this valve. It doesn't come pouring out. Just watch. That bubble will keep getting bigger and bigger 
and bigger. I'm going to make it kind of big. And then watch what happens when I stick my hand to it. See how it just sticks to my hand? It just waves there. It doesn't really go anywhere. It just sticks right to the surface. So I could drink my lemonade right from my hand. Oh, and look, I almost lost my drink bag. If you don't, if you turn your back, everything floats away. Oh, there goes water everywhere. Okay, hold on. Well, I've thoroughly made a mess up here, but luckily it's just raspberry lemonade that I'll have to wipe up later. But it shows you the importance of keeping everything restrained up here on board the station and what fluids really do. It's the same way when you put water on your toothbrush, it just sticks there in a big bubble until you put it in your mouth and start brushing your teeth. Hi, my name is Bridget. What in your opinion is the hardest thing to do in microgravity? Well, I gotta be honest, because that's a great question. And some of the hardest things to do up here are things that you do every day on the ground pretty easily. And one of those is going to the bathroom. It's just not easy up here. We've got special pieces of equipment to help us out, but it takes a little practice and you gotta make sure you get good at it. And the other thing is we don't have a shower up here. So we have special towels and soap. And for us, we kind of take a towel bath so that we keep ourselves clean. Um, but if, you know, if I, if I had my druthers, boy, I'd love to have a shower up here. Hi, I'm Seth. Uh, what is your favorite experiment that you've done in the ISS, and how will it benefit us on Earth? So I love it when I get questions like this because I want people, I want everybody certainly here at the Smithsonian today, all the future engineers and everywhere to understand why the science on the space station helps us out here on Earth. So one of the experiments I did the very first week with my crewmate Alex Gerst from Germany was something called myotones. And what that experiment did is it looked at Alex's muscles and some of the other tissues that connect to the muscles called tendons. And we basically are studying those muscles to see how he changes while he's up here during six months. And you may think, well, why is that important to me? Well, if you've ever been in the hospital for a long time, or maybe your grandma or grandpa, you know that when they come out of the hospital, sometimes they're really weak because they've been lying in a bed. And so we're trying to figure out how our muscles change because we think it's the same as it would be in grandma or grandpa in the hospital. And could we somehow keep them from not getting weak in the hospital? Could we develop new methods to keep them strong so that when they finally get over their illness, they can come home and they almost feel like they never left? So they like to look at us astronauts up here because for most of the day we're floating around. You know, we're not using our leg muscles. Maybe when I work out I do. But for most of the day, we're floating around, so it's very similar to lying in a hospital bed. And that's why I really like doing that experiment just a couple of weeks ago. Hi, my name is Laurel, and my question is, if you could build another space, space station, what would you do to improve it? Ooh, so many things come to mind. This Really, the space station is an amazing laboratory up here, and I was so impressed when I first got here with everything that I saw. But if I got to pick, I'll say two things. I would definitely have a shower. I don't know how we do it, but something, because just a warm, hot shower would feel so good. And the second thing is, and this may surprise people, but you think about all the trash cans you use in your house and on Earth on a daily basis. Very easy to throw things away, and it is for us up here too. The problem is, for a period of time, we have to live with our trash. We can't throw it on the curb and have the trash men come pick it up, so we are very careful about sealing and isolating things, but trash builds up really quickly when you don't, when you're having to live with it, and we just don't see that on Earth because we give it to the trash men every day and let them take care of it. 
And so we need a good way for us to handle trash up here and get rid of it in a much, much easier way. Because right now we send it down on our visiting vehicles, on our cargo vehicles that come up. We actually pack those full with a lot of trash sometimes to get it off the space station. Hello, Serena. How do you do repairs on the space station? Wow, and we, we definitely do a lot of repairs. Space Station is, is getting up there in its years, and so to make sure she keeps running as smoothly as possible, I'd say some of our daily tasks are what we call maintenance. So we'll often do repairs inside the space station. Like for example, if the toilet breaks and or anything like that, then we'll do repairs on that inside. But if a bigger piece of equipment breaks, then often we have to fix it on the outside of the space station. And if we do that, then we have to do a spacewalk. And we put on our two big spacesuits and head out the door. And we're talking with Mission Control in Houston the whole time to make sure that everything we're doing is correct. And it's a, a really important day when that happens on board the space station because everybody's involved and we want to make sure we keep everybody safe. And we had one just a couple of weeks ago. Drew and Ricky were in their spacesuits, and Alex and I helped them get in. And then Alex and I helped move the robot arm to move Ricky around station to get certain things done. And it ended up going really well. Hi, my name is Devin, and what happens if you get sick in space? Ah, it's right up my alley. You know I'm a doctor. So, but certainly we have a lot of doctors on the ground that are looking out after us. Um, but on space, we actually have our own medical kits. We've got medications if we need them. If people get sick, we've got bandages we can use. Um, if someone gets a really deep cut and we need to put in sutures, all of us are trained to do that. Um, so we have a lot of capability up here um, to try and take care of each other if someone gets sick. What has your experience as an astronaut taught you? I think the biggest thing it has taught me is patience and perseverance. And what does that mean? That means sometimes when you're trying to do something, it's not going to work out the first time and it's not gonna work out the second time, and it's not gonna work out the third, the fourth, the fifth, or the sixth time. And you wanna get really mad and really frustrated because you know, you're wasting your time and you're trying to get something done, and sometimes you just gotta learn to take a step back, take a deep breath, and look at the problem from a different angle. And that's what engineering is all about, right? Solving problems in different ways. And I have learned so much patience by a lot of the training I've done because sometimes the training is very hard. And at first you think, I can't do that. Stop, take a deep breath, try again. Try a different way. It usually works out. Where does your astronaut wa astronaut's waist go? Say that one more time. Where does your astronaut's waist go? Oh, you mean like trash? Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about trash or just any waste on board the space station, kind of like we talked about, we can't just shoot it out the airlock um, like you see in the movies. Uh, we can't do that because that would clutter the whole environment, the space station, and, and a lot of other things live in. So for a good portion of the time up here in the station, we keep our trash in separate little areas to kind of keep it away from our living areas, but and essentially we do live with our trash in the house. Serena, thank you so much for talking with us today. We want to present you with a 3D printed challenge coin that was designed by a middle school student named Emily. When you get back to Earth, please come by the museum to collect it. Enjoy the rest of your time on the station. Absolutely, thank you so much. It was great to talk with you and all the future engineers. Have a great day, everybody. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event.